front here in the trade fight, Stephen. One of the problems is it's always hard to figure out exactly what the Chinese are doing and why. How do you read the move overnight to let its currency weaken past seven? I think, Sarah, they just want to underscore the fact that unlike what uh, Jim Cramer just said, China's actually pretty good at strategy and uh, they have a lot of tools at their disposal, um, monetary, uh, infrastructure spending, uh, um, other fiscal policy actions, uh, the currency, uh, their demand for U.S. Treasuries, which has not been deployed yet. Uh, and they're pretty methodical in assessing uh, their own sense of risks. And I think um, uh, they wanted to send a very quick uh, response uh, to uh, the tweeter in chief, uh, and, and they did that. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think you can expect a, a lot more to come in terms of um, broad-based Chinese strategic response to U.S. So, uh, uh, pressures. So, so what you're saying, Stephen, that you're ending sort of the discussion as to whether this is market forces at play or manipulation, you think undoubtedly that it's the latter. Well, look, I think, uh, Scott, there's been a uh, good reason to expect uh, market-driven downward pressure uh, on the Chinese currency. They've resisted that. Now they've let it go a little bit. Uh, and um, I think the important thing to note is that in managing their currency, as they have done uh, for a long time uh, in, in, a, in a market-driven context, the bulk of the decline is, is uh, against the dollar, uh, the, the uh, renminbi against other major foreign currencies has been unchanged to slightly up during this period. So it's basically a surgical strike uh, directed at the U.S. Uh, without antagonizing China's other trading partners. So there's been a lot of talk today that uh, the U.S. is going to lead a big uh, multi-country uh, uh, coalition of the willing uh, to intervene against the Chinese currency. The other countries are not interested uh, in that. They don't, they don't have, they're not feeling the type of pressure that we are. As far as the pressure China's feeling on its economy, Stephen, how severe do you think it is, especially with this new round of tariffs announced last week? I, look, I don't think it's severe, sir. I, I was there a few weeks ago. I mean, the economy, you know, turned in a, a, a weak second quarter, but, um, you know, it's, it's only down about a half a point from the average growth rate of the preceding uh, eight quarters. So, uh, you know, the, the economy, I think, is uh, not uh, deteriorating nearly as swiftly as it did, say, uh, during the depths of the financial crisis when they really uh, had more genuine a concern for a precipitous uh, collapse. So are you then saying that you think the Chinese can quote unquote wait Trump out and take this as far as they need to take it to get the deal that they want to get? Look, I, I they're not they're not going to make a bet, um, Scott, on uh, 2020. They have no idea, as do any of us, uh, who is going to win. But uh, uh, I think there's a uh, a view in Beijing, and I heard this when I was there a, few, a couple of weeks ago, that um, even if Trump loses uh, and um, the other party uh, comes in and, and is uh, and, and still uh, antagonistic toward China, they're more convinced, I think, that um, uh, a, a new president would have more discipline to the policy process, operate as more of a multilateralist, uh, work within uh, uh, long-standing alliances. And the Chinese, I think, um, are, like um, many of us, are very distressed at the lack of discipline. Uh, you, you talked earlier about we're only a tweet away from this or that. Uh, you know, that's, that's not the way to run uh, the largest economy in the world. It's not the way the second largest economy in the world uh, wants to react to us either. So, uh, you know, they, they would certainly prefer to have more discipline.